Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert, and it's great to have you tuning in wherever you find yourself on this great Friday. And, you know, there's some places in Scripture that uh, speak out against our culture or step on our toes, maybe a little bit more frequently than other passages of Scripture. And, uh, and today we're looking at a passage where Jesus addresses something that over the last 10 years has happened roughly 8 million times in the United States, and that is divorce. And in me even saying that, maybe uh, cues some, some previous experiences you may have had or some friends have had with churches and religion as it pertains to divorce. And what I want to do is just say, hey, what does Jesus say about this? Not what does some, you know, charged up religious person say, but what does Jesus himself have to say about this? And what does that mean for us? So let's take a look. Matthew 19, uh, starting in verse 3. And the Pharisees came up to him and tested him by asking, Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let man not separate. So it was back to the design. What did God design from the beginning? Think about that, he challenges them. And he continues, but they said, well, why did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away? Jesus answered, because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. From the beginning, though, it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And the disciples said, if such is the case of a man and his wife, it's better not to marry. He said to them, not everyone can receive this, but only to those of whom it is given. Um, and he continues on and, and, and kind of explains it some more. But, but really what we we're seeing here is he, he says, hey, you're, you're asking for permission. The, 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 the Pharisees come, hey, can we divorce our wife for any reason they, is the question they ask. And isn't that what we have today? Marriage is based on convenience and happiness. And whenever those things aren't in place, we dissolve those for irreconcilable differences, for any cause, essentially, just like the Pharisees are asking. But Jesus says, let's go back to the beginning. What is marriage? He says, marriage is when a man leaves his father and mother and holds fast to his wife. They, the two become one. Before God and these witnesses, we say as officiants at those marriage ceremonies, and they were joined together. Under God and his blessing, that is the design for marriage. One man, one woman for one lifetime. And till death do us part, like the vows we say. And so we've, we've got this understanding. Just go back to the understanding of what God created marriage to be and stop trying to make it something different. And see, that's essentially what we've had happen. Because of our own sin and, as Jesus says, hardness of heart, we've kind of undermined what marriage is. And in doing so, we've had to insert divorce as an option for marriage's ending. Now, what we have here is, is Jesus explaining, hey, there is cause for biblical and, and acceptable divorce. He uses infidelity as a, a lawful and permissible reason. Elsewhere in 1 Corinthians 7, we see that an unbelieving spouse abandoning their partner is another acceptable cause for divorce. We've commonly taught that in cases of abuse or extreme neglect, that that also falls under a similar uh, provision of 1 Corinthians 7. But I'm guessing you didn't tune in to go, hey, can I get divorced today? I, I, the, the Pharisees probably also weren't asking that. They're trying to trap Jesus from a, a, a position of legality. So what's this have to do for us today? Well, I think Jesus' answer should cause us to do a couple of things and should cause us to go back and go, okay, what is God's intent and design for marriage? And how do I follow his plan for that? Which means if you're in a place of struggle in your marriage, understand that except for those, those nuances and those situations that we've mentioned, God's design for you is to work through those struggles, to, to, to dig into the hurt, the pain, to, to do the hard work of forgiveness and restoration, and to try and restore and redeem your marriage. And that's going to be hard on the short term, but in the long term, it will bless you if you're willing to walk that road. 
And if you're not in a place of struggle, understand that, that these passages where Jesus talks about marriage and his intention for it and the, the destruction of, of divorce should cause you to treasure and care for your spouse like maybe you haven't been thinking about doing and, and should cause us to go, hey, this is important. You know, the disciples' response is interesting. They're, they're listening to Jesus and they go, if this is the case, maybe we shouldn't marry. I don't think Jesus' intention was to like scare people out of marriage, but maybe that response should cause us to pause as well and go, man, if this is the case, if that's the gravity of divorce, let's treasure our spouse if you're married. Let's, let's be significant in how we navigate this thing called marriage. And if you're not married, then let that response of the disciples be your caution to be very diligent and, and careful about how you navigate forward in your relationship. Not careless and based on emotion and feeling, but based on who do I wanna spend the rest of my life with and honor God in that. So wherever you find yourself in the, the experience of human relationships, I hope that these words of Jesus uh, would not condemn, but would liberate you to live uh, life relationally the way God has intended, because it's going to bless your life. I hope that you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.